actually was going to start by talking about language. And um, there's a kind of a standard discourse that you need to break through if you want to talk about these sort of issues to, um, um, for most people actually, most educated people or otherwise, um, there's this kind of line that when you would talk about economic possibilities, um, that essentially there's two possibilities. There's capitalism or communism or socialism or however it's termed. Um, that one has proved that it's the only thing that works, the other has proved not to work, and that's the end of the story, you know. Um, and it's, it's a really, it's odd because um, it's a very convincing and compelling narrative, and it's hard to get past it. But if you look at it, I think that the, the sort of fundamental basis of the argument is completely wrong. Um, and it can easily be turned on its head in a little funny way. So I wanted to start by, by actually, this might seem a little perverse, but starting from the word communism, um, that in distinguishing like what I would call sort of mythic communism um, and actual existing communism. Uh, mythic communism in the sense of like once upon a time there was primitive communism, everybody had the goods in common, someday in the future we'll have true communism like that. It's all about like ownership of property. But actually, you know, ownership of property isn't all that important. What's important is who has access to what, under what circumstances. You can have a place where everything's in theory publicly owned, but in fact some people control everything, so it doesn't matter. Or the other way around. Um, and, um, you know, they always say that communism is the principle of from each according to their abilities to each according to their needs. If you think about it, that's the way most people do most things most of the time. You know, if you're working for Exxon um, or, you know, some big bank and you're trying to fix a pipe, um, somebody says, hand me that wrench, um, you don't say, like, oh, yeah, what do I get? <laughs> and you don't charge the money for it. You, 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 know, you operate actually according to communistic principles while you're doing a task if you actually want the task to get done. Um, and um, I think that um, rather than seeing communism as a sort of ideal, it's actually a practical means of getting things done that everybody does all the time. Um, and there's good forms and bad forms. The more creative you have to be in your solutions, the more egalitarian the communism tends to be. That's why even um, you know, Republican software engineers, if they're trying to innovate, they tend to form these like democratic collect, small democratic collectives, um, because it's the only thing that works. I mean, that's the irony. Communism is actually the only thing that works in such a circumstance. Um, and um, you know, then if you're doing like incredibly uncreative, re repetitive stuff like factories, you can have fascistic top-down forms of communism. Um, but capitalism maybe should be best thought of as a way of organizing communism. Communism is always going to be there. I mean, it's also like if there's a natural disaster, everybody reverts to like from, from each according to their abilities to each according to their needs during the disaster because, it, I mean, in a way, markets and authoritarian hierarchical structures are a luxury they can't afford. They have to do what's efficient, which turns out to be that. Um, okay, so, so I mean, the real question is like, what's a good way of managing communism and, and what would be a way of managing communism that encourages the more democratic and egalitarian forms rather than the more fascistic ones? Well, I think clearly capitalism is a pretty bad way of organizing communism. <laughs>